Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today I'm back at Classic Stad in Frankfurt, the place I showed you quite recently. I've driven over today in the Focus RS, leaving the McLaren at home, but I have come to visit Lamborghini Frankfurt, who have their showroom inside here, and in particular, to take a look today again at the Lamborghini Aventador S, and their particularly nice car that they've got here. But while we're parked up just outside here, firstly, this color is very similar to the Aventador color that we're coming to see, but over this way, from McLaren Frankfurt. There are a couple of cars lined up. McLaren Frankfurt and Lamborghini that's just behind the glass are actually both part of the door group here in Frankfurt, so they're together. But we have the 570 GT, the 570 S, and a 720S in Azores. And that color looks great today. It stands out really nicely, and I like the color choice for the wheels as well. Now though, we did not come today to look at a 720S. I drove one of those the other day and you can see that video on the channel as well. We came to head inside where you can see there's a Hurricane Performante at the moment. So I will run inside and go and say hello. Just a quick peek while wandering by, a normal Hurricane on that side. If I swing around here, we have the Performante that I also drove quite recently as well. But this car in green with the green calipers is looking very, very cool. Now, that's probably the more usable car versus the Aventador. We're gonna go have a look at the big one. Here we go then. Now that's what I am talking about. This car, the Aventador S, is finished in blue Nila. It is a striking color, special order. From Lamborghini's Ad Personum, you can have all sorts of different things, custom colors and effects and finishes. But the Aventador S has so much presence. I don't think any other car in the world can be as dramatic as a Lamborghini V12, and in particular, one of these. Just look at this thing. And in fact, when I drove an Aventador S before and did a full review style video piece with it, the thing I couldn't get my head around was quite how much attention it gets as a car. Everybody spots it. And if you think about the shape of the car, literally, if you asked a child to draw a supercar, this is what they draw, this exact car, the Lamborghini Aventador. Anyway, I have the key right here. So let's unlock it, pop open doors, which obviously Lambo style, open upwards, have a quick glimpse at the interior, and this car's spec is awesome, with the blue touches carried through the interior, the blue stitching for the diamond uh, quilting there, it just looks insane, the blue stripe across the dash as well, and obviously for a quick rundown of some details, underneath the carbon fibre here, because this car is specced incredibly highly, you have a 6.5 litre V12, in fact, let's come round quickly and uh, Fold the seat forward, pop that open, come and show you the engine back here because it's just cool. 6.5 litre V12, 740 horsepower, which is nuts. Something quite cool about them is you see this plaque here, that is the firing order of the different cylinders, it's written out on the bottom, then there's the carbon strut over the top of it, so that's a bit of a monster right in there. Slam that down, that closes properly. Then down here, carbon diffuser, new look exhaust system for the Aventador S. This one has the race exhaust, and believe me when I tell you it's gonna sound insane and very, very loud. I am loving the silver wheels against the blue paintwork. I think that's a really, really nice touch. The Aventador S has four wheel steering, so the rear wheels will steer by a very small amount as well to give you more stability at speed, more turning ability while going slowly. But it still has the original sequential manual automated gearbox that's not the greatest in the world. Anyway, we'll experience that shortly. But today is basically about just taking out the Aventador S, seeing what it's like. And it's a big thanks to Lamborghini Frankfurt here. Ooh, nice carbon back seats. I was gonna say it's a big thanks to Lamborghini Frankfurt for allowing me the opportunity to take this for a drive. So let us step into the car here. Fighter jet style, you turn it on by lifting up the flap. You've also got ego mode for driving, but let's start this up. It's a good sound. And then we've got the control for the exhaust system as well. <laughs> it gets even louder. Everybody likes that. Just a little feathering. Wow. Barely anything. So, let's go head out on the roads and see what this thing is like. 
So welcome to the madhouse. Now, I've got to remind myself of the car. You've got the central control for choosing your driving modes. We'll start in Strada. Lift system up is that. Into gear with the paddle shifters, and the paddle shifters in this thing just feel super cool. Drives away more smoothly than it did in the previous car, and the turning circle is so much more improved now in the Aventador S than it was in the standard Aventador. <laughs> but it just feels like a monster already. Automatically shifted there from first to second, which is not exactly the smoothest thing in the world, but <laughs> rolling out past the front of Classic, uh, Classic Stud, this is just, it just feels crazy. It just feels like something mental, and even in the softer suspension mode, it's actually pretty bumpy. Not gonna lie, going over these bumps. Now the gearbox in here, is complete and total rubbish. I'm sorry Lamborghini, but it needs to move on a generation. It needs a newer gearbox system. It has funny things like stop start. So when you actually come to a stop in here, which with nobody behind me quickly, I can just do for a moment, you will hear the engine stops, which is odd. And then it fires back up again, but it's desperately impractical from the point of view of the fact that it's hugely wide it's very awkward to see out of. You've got a super, super low front windscreen, so what you can actually see forwards means if there's a traffic light anywhere near you, good luck. Out the back, you're looking through the slats of the rear window, which take up a little bit of the visibility, obviously over the back of the uh, engine bay, how that works. But it just feels like the most monumental sense of occasion. Now, I'm gonna drive it in manual just to use the paddles myself. Seven speed box because I think it works better. I'm gonna pop it up a moment into sport. I've got the exhaust valves closed again, but we'll open them in a moment when we're out onto the open road. But you just feel, even pootling along at under 20 kilometers an hour right now, <laughs> every head turns to look at this car. <laughs> That's quite funny actually, how many people over there were looking. And obviously, like I said, the exhaust valve is closed. It's in quiet mode. Um, if I get the key out of my pocket quickly, I can open it up press the number two button. <laughs> the noise, how much louder it gets. Stick that back in my pocket if I can. It's awkward, there's nowhere to put stuff. You know, normally you'd have a cup holder where you can put the car key, but you can't in here. Entry road to an autobahn then. You have to fluctuate the throttle as you shift gear to get the smoothest shift. But let's see if we can find a little de-restricted section and accelerate a little bit and experience a touch of this car. I think it's pretty much opening up right here. Up towards 8 a bit, now it's up yet. The wing's gone up. Okay then. Up to 200 kilometers an hour off, pretty effortlessly. It sounds so insane. Oh, there we go, it's completely empty. Quick. I mean, the engine is 
barely having to work to achieve that because it's so big and so capable. 740 horsepower. But I think I'm just beaming and almost my cheek muscles starting to get a little bit sore from the smile. <laughs> the shift's huge! going off behind you. It's sheer drama, honestly. Could a car have more of that sense of occasion? Literally, cliche phrase to use it over and over again like this, but I don't honestly think, however much money you spend, an Aventador, or now an Aventador S, is the height of that game. <laughs> being discreet, especially if you have the exhaust. Every shift does those cracks, those really loud, crumbly noises. Hard to describe, but the sound from that just carries away. It just feels really cool. And that's why people buy these cars, isn't it? I think dynamically to drive, the steering is strange. It's heavy and a little bit unusual feeling. Um, the way the power comes through is very linked to the throttle pedal, so you actually have to be pressing all the way down all the way down to get full acceleration and obviously it's a big heavy car it's not winning any lightweight awards but it's just hilarious to drive and the power may not be usable but it's done in a way that you can enjoy it an awful lot I've pulled into a lay-by for a moment and in typical Aventador fashion, whenever I film one, I have to let you listen to how it sounds. So let's open the window, which you do by the buttons in the center, which are backwards. So you'd think you press it down to open the window, but no, you press it up and then the window is open. But just have a little listen to the noise that this makes. <laughs> It's just silly. I think to continue this, we will close the exhaust valve. There we go. And make it a little bit quieter. So I'm not gonna disturb too many people to see what it's like with the exhaust closed for the moment. So back in my pocket, back into gear. Let's get rolling. It does pull away so much better than the previous gen of the car. We're still in manual, we're still in Corsa, so the ride is unsurprisingly rather firm over this kind of ground that I'm on at the moment. But let's pull out onto the road. Even in quieter mode, it's still more than loud enough. So you can actually drive it fairly gently as just demonstrated, I guess if we put it back into Strada and soften it all down, if you want to, if you want to, and you can get over how big it is, you can, but you're not going to because the car feels so much like it wants to be the angry brute that it looks like it is. So it's screaming at you to drive it, to actually push your foot down all the way to the floor and go a little bit crazy. It feels genuinely odd driving it slowly. I'm not in a city centre, that would just be too much stop-start and totally not what it's made for at all. Those down 
downshift overrun crackles. I don't I don't know how to describe that noise that you get when you lift off. It's just <laughs> mental. Well, I seem to find myself turning back onto the autobahn again. So we're in sport mode. Let's go back to Corsa and uh, see what the autobahn has in store. It does feel like a big heavy car though, going around a corner like this, even though it is a fair chunk lighter than the previous model. We've got the standard Aventador. But these roads are made for driving, and that's just what this car will do. I just went through a tunnel and I totally didn't rev it, which is very unlike me. Oh dear, sorry guys. <laughs> Let's pull out and have some fun. It's ferocious! It's a vicious, vicious, well it's a bull that needs taming. base which will mean it's time in a moment to turn it off but you've got a pretty good reversing camera there on the central display as well so into first gear flip up that and off and quietness which is something not very familiar to a car like this so inside there is next to nowhere to actually store anything um, you don't have any storage pouches some people attach self-made things here but apart from this tiny little storage thing here for a document. There's nowhere to put stuff. You can fit maybe a, a laptop bag behind the seats and there's a tiny bit of bonnet space as well. But for the little things, there's next to nothing. Then if you're not familiar with an event door, the way you open the door is you put your finger through that little gap and pull the lever up and the door does its party trick and up it goes. And it's got the Sensonum Sensun sound system as well, which is very nice. So there we go. The Lamborghini Aventador S for the second outing and it's just as crazy as the first and it felt like it got just as much attention in fact on that last little stretch when unfortunately my cameras weren't actually rolling even then I had somebody uh, stand at the road like in front of the car to stop it and hear the noise of a McLaren moving around but this thing is a small slice of craziness oh look 675 LT two very different colours but um, yeah, don't forget the 570 GTs right there. The only thing I don't like is the way Germany requires this number plate, Plinth, which looks horrendous. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it must be legislation to do with how it has to hold the number plate, but it looks cheap, tacky and ridiculous on a car that's otherwise really, 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 really cool in terms of how it looks. Anyway, with that, Moving around there, it's kind of a shame I didn't bring mine, but I will bring it today's video to an end. Big thanks, of course, to Lamborghini Frankfurt for letting me lending me the keys to take out their Aventador S for a little test drive today. So go follow their social media pages. I'll pop the links down below, but I'll wrap this one up for this time. So thanks as always for watching, guys. Make sure you're subscribed for plenty more supercar content in the future, and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers. <laughs>